This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. Welcome, nerds. I'm Mark Weber, and you're listening to A Graphic Conversation, the bi-weekly podcast where we read, discuss, and review the best, and hopefully not the worst, in graphic novels. Uh, today, I am joined, as I always am, by the original man-child, Ricky Widmer. Yeah, you know, I love Johnny like we saw him two weeks ago, but I, I like having all my room it's on the It's two side big of the table. guys on one side I, of the table. I can either sit here like I do for the fast break... Or I can sit mm-hmm. here where Dave sits, or I can just sit right in the middle. I'm kind of free roaming over here. Yeah. It's like having the middle of the bed. Yeah. How nice is that? Oh, it's the best it's the best feeling in the world. Or in my life, it's you have about this much of the bed. Because of the dog. No, not the dog. Dog's got his own bed. Oh, it's because okay. of the wife. You get this much of the bed, wife's got this much of the bed. <laughs> Half of it's never even been touched. Um, I don't know how it works. The life of uh, a married man, I guess. Right? Yeah, when you fall off the bed and you're like is his life now. <laughs> Hi, dog. How are you? Uh, anyways, uh, for those of you who have never listened to a graphic conversation before, uh, like I said, we we read, we discuss, we review graphic novels. This time it is Valerian and Loreline, The City of Shifting Waters. And before we press record, uh, I was telling Ricky about how if a 2005 emo band mm-hmm. uh, had told me or had announced that their record's called The City of Shifting Waters, I would have been like, hell yeah. <laughs> that is a badass title. I really I like that title more than I like the book. The I city think. is shifting water. Yeah, it's just it's super cool. Um, <laughs> you know they they got some cool names. Uh, those of you who who uh, are listening to this, you might know um, or have heard Valerian and Loreline uh, because it's kind of old sci fi, mm-hmm. you know, in kind of sci fi classic in a way, but also because there's a movie. Yep, uh, Valerian out about this, and that's that's a big reason why we wanted to read this. Mm-hmm. I know you were super hyped. Oh, I about can't it. wait to see the movie. Cannot yeah. wait to see it. And you were hyped about this, the graphic because novel, because of what I've been seeing with the movie. Because mm-hmm. I am one of the few that never heard about the graphic novel until I saw yeah. the first trailer for Valerian and Loreline, where they're like based off the ground breaking graphic novel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. What were your expectations going into this? Let's talk about that. I thought it was going to be a slam dunk. That's Mm -hmm. exact. I was, I was gearing up for a phenomenal ride, basically because that's what I've been seeing through. And I'll be honest, maybe it fallen into the trap. That's what I was seeing from the trailers, and I was like, oh man, if it looks this good, yeah, I can't wait to see what the graphic novels like. It's kind of like. The when I saw Watchmen, I went to see the movie. What a mistake that then, was watching that movie. Well, I went to see it. This was back in high uh-huh. school. Which funny story? I had a razor at the time or a phaser. Mm-hmm. The end button was broke, so I couldn't turn. If I turned off my phone, it was dead. My phone died while I was in Watchmen, so I had to go get nice. a new phone because I couldn't turn it on. So that's a fun fact story. But I went to see it, and then I was like, "Oh, I want to read the graphic novel." And besides the ending, I loved the graphic novel. So yeah, I was much expecting better. almost the same thing with this. However, it wasn't the exact same as my experience mm-hmm. with Watchmen. Yeah. Um, and, and those of you who don't know, we're in spoiler-free zone mm-hmm. right now. So we're not going to spoil anything no. if you want to read this. We will warn you before we spoil the hell out of this book. Uh, and, and I agree with mm-hmm. you in a lot of ways of that. Of You know, you kind of get the hype. I mean, I, I love sci-fi. If I had to pick a favorite mm-hmm. genre, it's sci-fi. 100%. Just don't deal um, with uh, time loops yeah, and time you, travel. Yeah, don't get into any of that shit, <laughs> which is what this book did. Yep. Uh, and uh, we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. And, and I love it. I mean, I grew up, my fa- my parents are, are Trekkies. Like, I grew up watching Star Trek. Uh, Star Wars is the best. Uh, Thank you for saying that last part. The Star Wars is the best. I love Star Wars. You got to pick one or the other. And I, I you, love Star Wars. You chose wisely, Mark. But I'm a, uh, you know I'm a political science yeah. kind of guy, mm-hmm. and, and that's what <laughs> that's what the original series of, mm-hmm. of Star Trek really dealt with was a yeah. lot of societal issues, and that's why it's super badass. <laughs> Big deal. Um, anyways, a lot of great societal mm-hmm. things being taken care of uh, on Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Anyways... So the city of shifting waters, you know, I was excited for that. I was, I was like, this is gonna be pretty cool. I know they have a lot of 
uh, kind of early looks at things. Uh, you know, that early sci-fi. Um, well, like computers, ooh. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and I, I really think this isn't necessarily spoiling anything, but mm-hmm. I really think it's interesting the way they say, you know, everything is instant for them. You can instantly travel. It's not like you have to, all right, well, we're going to fly this spaceship, yeah, you know, go in FTL. No, I want to go to the store, light. boom, I'm there. Yeah, exactly. So it's cool It's cool in that. It's very different, very unique, and it's kind of a classic, so I was mm-hmm. interested in that. Well, and um, also to me, the thing that got me right away was the mm-hmm. art style. And I never felt like with this, and I don't think this is spoilerly, uh-huh. I never – like I never got the connection that until I was like almost seventy five to eighty percent through the graphic novel because maybe my mind was just like, well, this is how it's gonna be. I just it, the story to the art never mixed. Like the art style to me looked like I was reading the funny Sunday morning cartoon. Yeah, yeah. It, it looked to me like, oh, I'm gonna pick up the Sun Times and check out what the comics mm-hmm. are for so the where- day. I actually disagree with that. I think that the art and the and the content mm-hmm. match very well because to me the the content was very cheesy. It was very campy. I guess in that sense. And then I saw this art as they're not trying to be realistic. They're trying mm-hmm. to be very classic comic. It's 1968 well, or something like that. I it's classic. It's what you'd expect. It's like I I mentioned to you um, when mm-hmm. we first started talking about oh what did you think about it like and this was the point where you had already read it. I still had to read it. And I or I had read like the first few pages. Yeah. Right from the first panel, I was like, so am I supposed to take this seriously? Mm-hmm. Because it looked like maybe it was because it had that kind of reflection of it looked like the funnies. But I kind of looked at it and I'm like, so I'm not supposed to take this seriously. This is like, because to me, mm-hmm. I'm usually a guy where, yes, I like to laugh, but... I like an in-depth story, and I like the story yeah. to drive it. And I didn't mm-hmm. think that this story was necessarily enough to drive and get me interested from the word go. Yeah, and, and something that's so um, kind of interesting when you when you think about this, too, mm-hmm. is knowing that it's the movie. And I honestly do not know very much about this movie coming up. It's coming out I don't 20, either. on besides, July 21st. Besides the trailers. Uh and in my head, I, I have trouble separating this movie from that other space movie that Chris Pratt and uh, Jennifer Lawrence, I believe, are in, uh, which I yes. don't remember the title Channing of. Channing Tatum. Uh, Channing Tatum. Yes. Yeah, not Chris Pratt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have trouble separating these two movies because it's boy and a girl, mm-hmm. boy and a girl space. Um, but anyways, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll get probably a little bit more into that in the spoiler mm-hmm. uh, in the spoiler zone. But Ricky... Uh, who should read this? Who who is this? I mean, graphic novel for. Really, to me, I knew I know you're going to ask me this question. I you have ask to. me it every single episode. But for this one, I think it's if you're a fan of the one and dones, where you're like, you know what, I want to get into it, but I don't want to have like we talked about morning glories at the beginning of the yeah. season. I think it was like episode three of the season. It's not something you have to jump into and you have to keep reading. You can read this one and then be done. So if Mm -hmm. you like those kind of stories, you might like this. Or if you're a person that likes the art styles of like the funnies and the um, newspaper, the morning cartoon. To me, it just it didn't. Plus, if you're a person that likes a ton of exposition. Mm-hmm. This is great for you because they explain almost everything. Which is very classic sci-fi. And okay. it is classic sci-fi to be like, I'm going to explain what this computer looks like mm-hmm. for five pages. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it's not it's not that crazy. Um, but, you know, it's just the kind of thing of like we're, we're getting you to know. And they have to do a lot of exposition because of the fact that you are just thrown into the middle of – you know, this isn't issue one of uh, Valerian Loreline. It's no, this is like issue 100 and something that came out, and we're just telling you one story. Mm-hmm. It's like when you jump into the middle of a Spider Man story, but you've never read Spider Man before. So they have to tell you a lot about it. Um, that's kind of what's going on a little bit. They beat you over the head a little bit with it, 
but we'll we'll get into some of that stuff too. The cool thing that, that like you said is it's very one and done if you want. I mean, they have the city sh- shifting waters, the empire of a thousand planets. That's what the movie is based off of, mm-hmm. uh, which we did not read for this one um, for reasons. Uh, but um, <laughs> and the cool thing about this, by the way, I'm pretty sure it's free. This is free on on Kindle. It is. It's mm-hmm. an ebook. It's a PDF, mm-hmm. so it's going to be a pain for you to actually read and it. And I did see some of the comments were one of the comments on Amazon that gave mm-hmm. it like a one out of five was like, you know what? It's just a PDF, and they just scanned it. It's not worth yeah. it. Um, to which I would think it's free. Yeah, it's, free is you're nice. not paying anything. Yeah. So I'll shut take that. Up. <laughs> uh, you know, but. Um, yeah, it's very much if you like that type of stuff, if you mm-hmm. like a very classic sci-fi, um, it's very campy in a lot of ways. So if you're into that, you might enjoy it. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to say this is like Doctor Who, but if you like that kind of style of mm-hmm. like it's sci-fi, very unique sci-fi, and it's very campy and you're going to have fun while maybe a serious thing happens, then sure, you're going to like this. Um If you're someone who's a little bit probably like the two of us in this room and – you're a little spoiled by the sci-fi world that we live mm-hmm. in now and the quality that we get. You might feel a little underwhelmed by this. Um, so, Which is me. T- take that as you will. It's a very short read. Mm-hmm. So if you want to read it, it's free. You'll get through it in an hour. I think it's like um, 48 pages or yeah, something like that. It's quick. It's very quick, which essentially is like, I don't know, two issues. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to get through it pretty fast. So now hit pause if you want to read this, but not yet. Hit pause in, in just a little bit. We are about to enter spoiler zone. The way it worked, we didn't spoil things before, but mm-hmm. now we're going to go into we don't care anymore. We will spoil it at all. So if you want to read, like I said, it's free. I say go ahead and just do mm-hmm. it. Why not? Uh, then you can go ahead and hit pause in just a little bit, but not right now, and come back and don't join us don't when do you're yet. done. Yeah, when you're done, come back and join us. But if you don't care about that, if you just want to you know, be here for the conversation, mm-hmm. that's fine too. A lot of people will do that. So uh, be a part of that conversation down below and on Twitter, at Ricky Widmer, at the Mark Weber, or at Most Valuable Pod. So uh, go ahead and hit pause now. All right, but if you didn't do that, uh, <laughs> then all right, let's talk about this. I want to talk about... I know, I know we both have, mm-hmm. have some criticisms, all nothing nothing too huge. But let's talk about something you liked. What's something you liked about this? Loreline. Yeah, I liked like th- one of the main only <laughs> only main positive um, mm-hmm. that I came from this. There were two characters I liked: Loreline and then Sun Sun Ray, I believe was his yeah. name. Um, those are the only two characters I like. Sun Ray because he was kind of like that. I don't give a fuck what you say. I'm gonna do what I want. Pew uh-huh. pew pew. Shoot the robots that my bullets do nothing against. Um, plus, Loreline to me was to me the only character that I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna attach to this character. How she was mm-hmm. kind of a little bit spunky, a little bit more. Where like when she got shrunk, it's like. Don't talk to me like that, blah, blah, blah. She was a little bit more attitude-ish. Yeah. And attitude, that makes it sound terrible, but she was – she had more personality to me mm-hmm. than Valerian, than anyone else. And yeah. to me, like I said, there's – that's really to me the only positive I can think from. This was mm-hmm. not – one of my favorite graphic novels that we've read. And I, and I think it's something that's interesting, too, and, and just kind of a downfall of, of mm-hmm. what how we jump into something like this, uh, which is supposed to be very single issue and stuff like that and just one off. Um, but here's some stories here and that you kind of – you don't see any character development. Mm-hmm. Um, and – you know, honestly, there's not really supposed to be any character development because it's part of a larger story. Uh, you see a guy like Sun Ray who's kind of taking over a little bit. At the end, you're like, all right, is he going to, you know, what's he going to do next? I'm very interested to know that. At the, the end, it seemed question. like he basically was getting a new crew together to, to take over the streets, do what he was doing the first time. Yeah. And, you know, that's an interesting idea. Uh, you have your favorite character, X, mm-hmm. Zomble. I just – I don't know. Um, but it, it's interesting because he's this big bad guy mm-hmm. who uh, kind of blows himself up. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, but that, you know that can't be the end of him. He's going to come back. So there's there's interesting things for, for the future that are going on that are being set up. There's interesting things that happened in the past, sure. But in this short, contained, you know, hour it's going to take you to read this, there's just not really any development that goes on. Uh, and that's what you kind of miss out on. And something that I'm sure – 
they'll do differently in the movie because they kind of have to mm-hmm. for that. Um, I hope when it comes out on July 21st, I think. I believe you so. Guys, you guys will know whether or not they well, did that. And the thing that I didn't really – my main grief mm-hmm. with this graphic novel or this comic, however you want to look at it, was – the things that they ex- – I feel like they explained things that they didn't have to, but the mm-hmm. things that I would have liked them to explain, they didn't. Like, first off, how how and why – like, how did Loreline get to Valerian when he went to New York? Well, and she why, went to Brazil apparently. And why did she come up in a different spot when mm-hmm. – Really, it was supposed to be, okay, I'm traveling, boom, I hope that and I, this isn't yeah. underwater because I'm going to be in the same spot just And I years feel ago. like that's one of those campy type of just, mm-hmm. yeah, accept it kind of things. Where, where, like, back when this was, you know, mm-hmm. being written, it was very much like, and coincidence. She just came and she happened to get there at the right time. And she happened to go to the place just magically that has the, all these scientists mm-hmm. meeting uh, to talk about how they're going to fix the world. You know, and it's just one of those kind of campy, like, oh, that happened. And you just, it's like the ultimate suspension of disbelief. You just have to accept that yeah, I, it happens. I was like, huh, I could have used some explanation there. When mm-hmm. they brought up the main patty, X, I would have liked a little bit more explanation on him. I would have liked a little bit more explanation on him and Valerian's past because mm-hmm. they make the joke of like, he goes, oh, well, I'm not here to bore you with our past. No, continue. I would like to know who you are. For the sake of where I, we're at right I now, would, please I would let me like know. to know and, and a he's, little bit more about these you characters. Know, and he tried to, to conquer the galaxy mm-hmm. before, because I had to look up a little bit for him, too. He tried to conquer the galaxy before, and yeah, it didn't work, see, and he was like, captured, and now he escaped. See, and, and that's my problem. It's tough. That's my problem with stuff like this, because maybe I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the assumption when it comes to graphic novels, unless it is something like... Batman, Mm -hmm. Flash, Spider-Man, something that is so universally known to where you can say, this is the Joker, and I do not have to explain who the Joker is because most of my audience Mm -hmm. will know who, like, the people not looking it up are a much higher percent than the people actually looking up who the Joker is. I think with this, it's one of those things, who's going to take that? Now, I didn't take that next step. Yeah. To look up who he but is. But to be fair, this was written so long ago they that it was popular have, then. And Pe- this people it, did know. You got to think, when this mm-hmm. was written, we didn't have the internet. Yeah. We didn't have what we couldn't just type it into Google mm-hmm. and it pop and, up. And it's the kind of thing where when you're assembling, mm-hmm. when you're putting together comic strips and comic issues from the 60s to 70s, you're, you're kind of not going to be able to say, let's edit in some... Explanation for who this character is. I just feel is. like l- the way Loreline got there needed a little bit more explanation. Yeah. X needed a little bit more explanation. And there was one other one that I'm blanking on right now, but there was just, there were too many things that that was one thing. Also, another thing, it didn't pull me in from the start. I like mm-hmm. graphic novels that pull you in from the start or make you care. From the very beginning. If I am very wishy-washy, if I get five pages in and I'm wishy-washy and I start thinking, should I continue or should Mm -hmm. I just put this down? I've got other things to do. It's got a little bit. If I'm starting to think Mm -hmm. that, you're not going to be a high-rated graphic novel to me. It's got a little bit of some action at the beginning Mm -hmm. and and moving quick once he gets to uh, 1986 New Mm -hmm. York. Uh, Because it's traveling through time. That was it. Because I get why this was the other part. You just Uh reminded me by saying New York. I know that this was written in the late 60s. -hmm. So he's technically going to the future of where the reader was. Yes. I get that. So you basically are predicting that, oh, a tsunami has taken over New York. Tell me why. Tell me well, a little bit more of why. And they do give you – I'll, I'll give them credit in this. They do say that – they they blatantly say we don't know. Mm-hmm. And once again, that's one of those campy sci-fi you just have to accept, unfortunately, uh, when, you get, when you read something like this of saying that 1986, a nuclear explosion went mm-hmm. off at the North Pole and – 
you know, kind of global warming-ish, melted the ice caps and, you know, everything got fucked over. Uh, the earth gets heated, and we don't know what happened after that because the power that be won't let anybody travel there to find out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will give them credit for that of, is it this? Is it the best way to deal with something like that? No. Uh, but it's their way of just saying, and it's very appropriate for the time of just, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, and I, I don't, to me as a reader, mm-hmm. I don't like that because ugh, I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. But it's like to me where it's it's kind of like when someone says, someone says something like, hey, blah, 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 blah. No, but you're like, do this. But why? Because I said so. Okay. You didn't really tell me why I should uh-huh. be doing this. You just told me because I said so. Like, mm. that's what this reminds me of. And that's why that's kind of a little bit of a negative on my part. I know yep. that there are other people that are going to jump in and be like, okay, I accept well, everything. I think that, yeah. I mean, if you jump in with that mentality, mm-hmm. very clear your head and just accept what's going on, you'll have fun. You'll you'll enjoy reading this. I mean, uh I, I think it's cool. I think that a lot of the world stuff they have is cool. I think mm-hmm. this this version of New York that's destroyed and there's a tsunami that's going to show up at some point. I think that's really cool. Be interesting to explore that a little bit more. I mean, we only get like, I don't know, 30 pages of it. Um, and then boom, they're gone. Yeah. And then you're quite possibly never going to go back, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, although they set it up where Sunray, they probably will go back at some point, I'm sure. Uh Although they're not supposed to. It's against the rules. Anyways, um, yeah, the the hard thing is, as a modern reader in the style that we are used to now, it is so hard to go back and read something like this and just accept it for what it is, mm-hmm. you know, without comparing it to what we have now, where you could not, for the life of you as a writer, get away with saying, I'm just not going to explain it. Just don't worry about it. Unless you did it in a really jokey kind of way of like, Hey, I know this doesn't make sense, but don't worry about it. It's not worth explaining. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do get certain sci-fi stuff where they will say, if they're not going to be a hard sci-fi, where they're going to say, I know the science doesn't make sense for why this works, but don't worry about it. Just accept that this is the way it is in this universe. Mm -hmm. You get that a lot with like, well, why are they able to travel at the speed or faster than the speed of light? Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Okay. You know, and you kind of had to just accept those yeah. type of things. Uh, leaps of faith here. But I don't know. I mean, for me, my my gripes, of course, are lack of any character development. I understand mm-hmm. why it's there. But as I'm reading this graphic novel on its own, I can't ignore that. Um, it does have a lot of that just, all right, and then we're doing this. And then we're doing this. And then we're doing this. And it just kind of is moving along, and you're like, yeah, none of these things really have that that's, many consequences. That's another thing that bugged me, and there's going to be a lot of these, so I apologize. Mm-hmm. But where it would be like, panel, 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 later. Yeah. And much later. It's like, but what is going, like... They're skipping forward a lot. Just keep the story like, moving. Why are you skipping, like... Like, to me, it's when you do that, like, once or twice, mm-hmm. fine. But the more you do that the more it fatigued me as a reader. Yeah. To where I'm like, okay, so I'm basically, it's it's kind of like I felt- You're getting the highlights. I felt like I was watching a Netflix show, but instead of watching it, I just kind of moved my hand on the little uh, cursor, mm-hmm. and I just watched the little preview box that comes up, and that's what I did. And, and I stopped you get a little bit. And I stopped at times, and then I, I moved forward a little bit, that's how I was mm. watching this graphic now. And that is yeah, that is kind of how this how this feels and uh and a lot of that honestly to me is just them saying that it's the uh I'm trying to think of a good way to to, to reference it, but it's that mm-hmm. ultimate hero that no matter it's Batman's utility belt. No matter what, he's got the answer in that utility belt. Mm-hmm. He didn't know this was ever gonna be a problem, but he knows what the answer is already. Yeah. It's very much that of doesn't matter what situation these two are going to find themselves in. Mm-hmm. Later, they got out of it. You know, that type of a thing. And they just magically find their way out of things. And something that was appropriate at the time, now readers are not really willing to accept well, stuff like that. And kind of something like that where you say where it's like, this happens and then later, up oh, they're out of it. Mm-hmm. it. 
I kind of use the analogy of it's kind of like when your cable skips and you're like watching something. It's like, oh, how is he going to get out of it? Oh, and my cable skipped. And then when it comes back, hey, we're free. It's like, but what happened? Yeah, right. Luckily, we got Twitter now. It's like, and you I can go find to out. See what happened? Yeah. Um, and I and we've all had moments like that mm-hmm. uh, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, my my positives, like I said, I think it's a very interesting kind of world. I think it's kind of cool to sort of throw back for that. I definitely am willing to assume that this was maybe not the best one we should have read. We sh- probably should have started with the second one. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, when you just read reviews and stuff, it seems mm-hmm. like this one gets a little negatively reviewed more so than some mm-hmm. of the other ones out there. Uh, and they even have complete collections, too, which are going to give you pretty much everything, mm-hmm. um, which is a little bit more interesting, I guess. So, I don't know. I mean, for, for what it is, it does its job fine. And for understanding the context that it came from, I don't – it's not one of those things that hold up. I mean, we we both like to play video mm-hmm. games. Crash Bandicoot just came out recently uh, and uh, the this remaster. And a lot of people are talking about going back and playing something that they used to. Mm-hmm. And occasionally you do that. You play a Zelda game that you used to love and you're like, man, this really holds up. Mm-hmm. And then you play, you know – random bubble bobble or whatever <laughs> and you're like oh shit this does not hold up this mm-hmm. does not work anymore you i go and play gold night and you're like man i love this game yeah or i could f- play this 20 or years the flip from side, now some people are like shit this is not like call of duty <laughs> i cannot get used to these controls hey man hey man slappers only baby that's how you play or slappers uh, only with your bazookas bazookas Bazooka the rocket, hell launchers. rocket launchers rocket um, launchers there you or go or golden guns only one shot kills nah that's not fun uh that's just is a way to ruin friendships um, <laughs> play as odd job hats only now that's throw, good you can only throw the hat odd job's such a <laughs> dick move to play as odd job cuz he's so damn short you just what? can't. You gotta aim down. Well, it was odd job that threw the hat, and then in Austin Powers, it's like, did you just throw your shoe at me? Yeah. So, uh, anything else you want to say about this? Um, I just it wasn't one of my favorites. All right, so That's, let's well say that. Let's hear. Let's hear what you got for a review. I'm gonna say, are we rating and review? Is that yeah, what we're doing yeah. now? Right. I'm gonna say a two point five, and the reason why is, like I said, but about the time in the story where they got to the ranch, the old guy on the ranch. Mm -hmm. From there to the end, I was like, okay, this was good. Everything up to that, though, I was like, okay, all right. Like, I wasn't really, nothing really grabbed me in. And then by the time I got to that point, it was just like, whatever. And then it was like, oh, this is all right, I guess. It was nothing mind stellar, didn't have much of character development, yeah, I guess you can go the whole campy vibe, but mm-hmm. I I feel like if you're going to go campy vibe, you have to hit campy like Batman and Robin from the 60s, like the Adam West, Batman and Robin. You got to get that kind of campy going. No, oh, I think they actually do kind of have some of that. I didn't see it as much as maybe you mm-hmm. did. Maybe I missed some of that, but 2.5, I just think it was kind of eh, middle of the road. And yeah. I mean, if a friend said, hey, should I buy this? I would say, don't waste the money. It's free on Amazon. Yeah, it's free, so why not? Um, I, I, I would have to give it a three. I mean, I am per- fairly close to where you are mm-hmm. on, on the averageness of it. My big complaint is, like, I understand why certain things are the way they are, but looking at it in a modern lens, it just doesn't hold up mm-hmm. to what we have now. Uh and, you know, you, you can get some of those campy vibe. When I mentioned Doctor Who, I'm not talking about um, – Shit, Matt Smith, right? I don't know. We, I'm the, whichever doctors the are doctor, around now, I don't watch Doctor Who. Are you Who. talking David Tennant? David Tennant. I just was trying to think of whichever ones were popular yeah. now. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about go back to before it got kind of like re-brought with, up. With the actual, like, scarf. The and, old you know, mm-hmm. the old BBC where it's really shitty props that are mm-hmm. out there and stuff. Uh, I'm talking about that kind of campy Doctor Who. Like, that's <laughs> what this really kind of is. Um and it certainly has its place, and this certainly inspired a shit ton of writers mm-hmm. and stuff. And you have to appreciate it like that. I'm gonna piss people off here really quick. And good, good friend of ours, Pete. Uh, okay. You know, from our radio days. Mm-hmm. Good thing he's not in the room because he would hate <laughs> me for saying this. But what I always say is, I understand, I appreciate, and I enjoy the Beatles. 
but I would rather listen to today's music that were inspired by them mm-hmm. because I think they took what they did and are doing better things now. That's what this is for me. I appreciate this French comic, but I think that our our sci-fi writers are doing better things now because they got to build off of what was already established. And that's one thing I will say. I don't want to slap it in the face, but one of the main reasons why I push to have this as an episode for AGC mm-hmm. this season was because of the movie and because of the title screen in their trailer where it says, based off of the groundbreaking graphic novel. And it could be groundbreaking. This is only my f- first dive in. So I'm not going to judge the entire kind of series on this one. Yeah, It's kind of like when you, I'll put it this way, when you go to McDonald's sometimes, one time you might go... Man, those fries were perfect. Those chicken nuggets so crispy. You go two days later, wow, this is a soggy piece of mess. What was this? Sometimes you get a good batch. Sometimes you get a bad batch. Maybe this was a bad batch in the whole over scheme of Valerian and Lorelei. So something interesting here, just because I'm curious, and there might be breaks in here. I'm not sure. Like mm-hmm. I said, I'm not super familiar. This is a French, a French comic, mm-hmm. uh, but... The dates, publication dates are 1967 through 2010. And I find that interesting. Like I said, there could easily be Mm -hmm. breaks in there. I don't know. Um, But I would think that if this is something that just continued on and on and maybe they have an anime here or there, maybe they have Mm -hmm. this movie now, a book, you know, Mm -hmm. a novel. I don't know what all the things are that happened for it. But uh, although I do see that there was an animated TV series in 2007. But anyways... um, Maybe this is the kind of thing that just it lasted so long mm-hmm. that it kind of hit the different styles Giles, and the different the I- different generations. Yeah, the different things that were going on in that time um, and transformed. I mean, you know, they even just saying seen right here just from an article of talking about the influence that this had on things like Star Wars. And I know your favorite, The Fifth Element. Yep, I do love The Fifth Element. And why do you love it? Just because it's awesome. Oh, I'll tell you, multi pass. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you just want to multi pass. Yeah, you love the multi pass. <laughs> you know, it, it's just one of those things of multi pass. This kind of thing, uh, you know, it it has time travel mm-hmm. in it. It has this classic space opera, which is actually, if we really want to talk about my favorite genre, is it's the space opera. Nothing is more badass than the epicness that is space opera. Plus, you can't like going back to the Fifth Element. You can't forget Chris Tucker. And yeah, Fifth yeah. Element. God, Fifth <laughs> Element is such an awesome movie. It really is <laughs> underrated. Um, but yeah, so I there's a lot here, and I understand why it's probably groundbreaking, why mm-hmm. it has a legacy, and why it's carried on today. But unfortunately, it's one of those things where you just go, yes, but we're doing it better, better now. now. And thank you for your service, <laughs> but we're gonna leave you in history. Mm-hmm. Uh, So go ahead and read it because it's free. Why not? Uh, But we, every other week, are going to be, uh, well, for the season, until the season ends. We're about halfway through at this point. Uh, This is the first episode after the mid-season finale. Hey, there you go. Every every other week, we're going to come with a new graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And this is one where it is not a one-off. We are going to be reading The Manhattan Projects Volume 2. And it's hard to give descriptions without spoilers, Mm -hmm. so I'm going to try my best here. Um, But this is the second uh, volume here, and it's all about scientists and alternate history. And people you expected to be good guys being bad guys, and people being fucking crazy. Uh, And really, You're excited for this one. I love Manhattan Projects. It's awesome. Uh, And here's a little addition here. Uh, The battle for global supremacy is now underway, and the bad men of the Manhattan Projects will only accept one outcome, world domination. Isn't that exciting? Uh, So if you like history, you'll like just to see some of the different takes on some of this stuff. I'm excited because it's very weird. It's very quirky. And the one thing I will do for you guys out there, if you're like, but guys, I haven't read number one. I'm not promising. I'm going to say I'm going to try to because I can't remember when we read. It was a little while ago. The first one. I think it's in the zero season. If it's in the zero seasons and I can find our like recording of it, Mm -hmm. I will put it in the description for you guys, if you're just like, you know what, screw it. I want to listen to Ricky and Mark talk about it. 
to kind of see because we nerded should, out about it. Should I read the second one and yes. then I want to get caught up with the story? And should you, you read the first one as well? It. Yeah, you probably should. <laughs> you should. I love it. Um, we mentioned Pete, and just a quick shout yep. out to him because he's he's the reason why we picked this mm-hmm. one up. Uh, so. At Ricky Widmer, at the Mark Weber, at Most Valuable Pod, hit that sub button so that way you know when all of our uh, all of our content's going up. We got tons mm-hmm. of stuff going up every single day, so a lot for you to enjoy. Uh, and of course, hit the like button. Let us know down in the comment section what you thought of this graphic novel uh, or what you think just about sci-fi in general. What's your favorite uh, space opera, sci-fi, whatever it is? Let us know down below. We will see you in two weeks when we read The Manhattan Projects, Volume Two.